hello, hello. Good afternoon, Cannon View. How are you guys feeling today? Hope you guys are excited because um, someone rose from the dead. I said someone rose from the dead. There we go. That's more like it. Hey, welcome. My name is Eric. I'm your youth guy here. I'm going to invite you guys to stand up. Today, we are going to have an amazing time of worship, a powerful sermon given to us by Pastor Corey. So if you guys could just bow your heads with me, I'm going to pray. But before I do, I just want to just give you that announcement. He's risen. So let's worship. You know what? Let's worship. Let our worship make him come back a day early. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we just invite you. Come, Holy Spirit. We ask that you move. We ask that you touch our hearts, our lives. In Jesus' name, you're welcome in this place. And everyone says, amen. Amen. Easter for everyone. Easter for everyone. Easter for everyone. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is invited. Everyone is wanted. Easter for everyone. Everyone is valuable. Everyone is loved. Everyone is made in the image of God. Easter for everyone. Everyone falls short. Everyone gets humbled. Everyone needs Jesus. Easter for everyone. For those well off and for those on welfare. For the abused and the abuser. For the widow and the orphan. For the silent and outspoken. Young and old, left and right. Red and yellow, black and white. Boomers, Xers, millennials, Zs. Easter is for everyone. When we see everyone the way Jesus sees them, everything changes. We see our need for a savior. Our need for a deliverer. Our need for a new beginning. Easter brings us to a new reality. A reality that fear doesn't have the final say. That death doesn't have the final say. That when Jesus said, it's finished. He finished the power of the grave. Easter for everyone. It means you, me, and your worst enemy. All get equal footing at the foot of the cross. It means we all have an opportunity for a new way of living. That your past doesn't define your future. That grace is timeless. Freedom has a name. And his name is Jesus. Easter is an invitation for everyone. For you. To see that hope is here. Love is here. Jesus is here. Easter for everyone. Dead could not hold
who's happy to be at church this weekend? Hey, we have a reason to celebrate. Nobody got hurt with the big balls, I don't think. I didn't hear any screaming. Uh, go ahead and throw those big balls up this way, or the small ones this way. Good night. That's going to kill me. The big ones are going to go with some of our lead pro guys. The little ones, go ahead and throw them on stage. We're going to take a moment. Say hello to somebody you haven't seen in a while. Tell them happy Easter. I'm so glad to see you tonight. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. <laughs> Who says you can't have fun at church? But we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's worth partying about, isn't it? <laughs> Eric, did you see me dancing during the worship? Yeah, dude, it was awesome. I thought you were going to break out some flags yeah, or something. Yeah, I was jumping in my own mind. That was amazing. It was awesome. <laughs> when you're my age, it's all in your mind. All right, I'll keep that in my mind. So yeah. anyway, we have a special gift that we want to give, and we have these uh, Jesus t-shirts. And so who would like a free t-shirt? Come on, who wants a free t-shirt in the house? I don't know. You got to shout a little bit. God Boom, bless you, right? bro. I thought, I thought I was going to hit her in the face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If it doesn't fit, give it back to me. <laughs> Actually, if it doesn't fit, feel free to visit our uh, bookstore and get the right size, all right? Um, also, if this is your first time here at Canopy Vineyard Church, by the way, my name is Eric. I'm the youth guy here. And, and this is... Uh, I'm Kirk Yamaguchi. I'm the janitor here. The Sensei Kirk. Sensei Kirk. Hey, guys, if this is your first time here, please feel free to stop by our front desk uh, lobby. We have this amazing little um, gift basket for you, or gift bag, excuse me. Um, it has a lot of cool little goodies, and we'd like to get your information as well, just to connect you a little bit more. So right after service, just head over to the information desk. And on Wednesday night at 6.30, here in the auditorium, we're having a worship and baptism night. And we're believing that many people are going to come into relationship with Jesus Christ through these... And it would be a perfect time for you to come back on Wednesday and get baptized of your public declaration of your new life in Christ. So we invite everybody to come back on Wednesday night. Yeah, Wednesday night's going to be amazing. 630. Can you guys say 630 with me? 630. Hey, we have multiple ways if you would like to be uh, involved in investing in eternity with us in the offerings there's the different ways that you can do that. And you may not know this, but we as a church support 43 missionaries locally and abroad. You guys have also helped us to plant 72 churches and unreached villages in Myanmar in the last two years. And be praying for Myanmar as they are in the midst of an incredible genocide. And those church planters need our prayer. You've also helped over the years plant over 300 churches in South Sudan. And so you guys have been amazing what you've done. We feed over 600 kids a week with our backpack program for kids that take their food home so they have food to eat over the weekend. So empty stomachs don't learn. And these kids' scores, test scores, are going up because of your contributions. And we have fed thousands of households during COVID. And as we all know, great needs in our community. Thank you for how you've contributed to that. So um, you're, I'm praying now, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Please pray. So we're going to pray. Join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for... Uh, the generosity of all of our friends here and thank you for the lives that are being impacted here in the Grand Valley, but also, Lord, in far outreaching areas like South Sudan and Myanmar, your kingdom 
is advancing in unreached villages. And Lord, as we uh, give back to you and as we invest in eternity, Lord, we pray that you would help us to do more and more for your kingdom's sake. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. So like Pastor Kirk was saying, we'd love to invite you guys back this Wednesday. But then also, that's this upcoming Sunday, we're starting our new series called Jesus That May Shock You. So please feel free to look at the screen. He's been called a good teacher, a rabbi, a prophet, a man of God. We think we know who Jesus is. So who is this Jesus? It may surprise you. Well, uh, nobody's perfect, right? Can I get an amen? amen? And thank you guys for coming tonight on a Saturday night. My name's Corey, and it's more than an honor than you know. I'm very humbled to share with you about the most significant event that has ever happened in the history of the world. A, a, a man, God, named Jesus, came back to life. It's incredible. So we're going to teach on that in a moment. But gosh, you guys look good, by the way. You look better than normal Sundays. So turn to your neighbor and say, you look good. Yeah. And if, if you're not perfect and if, you're, uh, if you've made mistakes in life, you are in the right place. Because we're all that. We're all pretty messed up at times, aren't we? Hey, before I teach, I wanted to just uh, thank and honor and let you know something. So I asked Kirk. I said, hey, Kirk, don't go off the stage yet. He doesn't know what's going on. So let's get Kirk back up here. And... Uh, Many of you, uh, if you're here for the first time, Kirk has been faithfully serving as senior pastor here for about 14 years before that in Canyon City. And hey, buddy, are you going to get emotional? Nope. Okay. You are, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> if people wonder why I get emotional, you just got to meet my dad. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Bill Rogers. Um, so I'm wearing this shirt tonight in honor of you. This is the first Easter it's weekend. It's a nice shirt. Bro. It is a nice shirt. It's... <laughs> It's the first Easter weekend in 25 years that Pastor Kirk hasn't shared the Easter sermon. And I wanted, I wanted all of us to honor him. Now, he'll do it again. We're going to have him do it in future years. You're not getting off the hook. But, Dang. <laughs> but I don't know of many people who have stayed healthy or been available or didn't take a vacation. He just loves Easter so much. And I think it's appropriate that we just simply honor 25 years of Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I think I did my math wrong. It's only 24. Oh, you did your math wrong? Yeah. Well, get off the stage, okay. man. No, just kidding, just kidding. But, uh, but I really did wear this too. I'm not going to wear it tomorrow because uh, I just love you so much. And, and you probably stink tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I probably will. Let me ask you a question, Kirk. I just wanted to stand on the other side of the screen here. I'll, people can see over you anyway. But um. <laughs> And so this year's theme for Easter is Easter for everyone. And that was on purpose. And so, Kirk, when we talk about Easter for everyone, why is that so important to you? I think in this day and age, we have become so divided in our world. And regardless of where we come from, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is for everyone. Yeah. 
Whether you come from the left or the right, whether you're five foot two or six foot two, Jesus is for everyone. Yeah. Male, female, it's for everyone. And that is so important for us to bring unity into not just the church, but in our community by us embracing Jesus for everyone. Yeah, amen. So when you guys see this Easter for everyone, the idea is Easter, of course, is the resurrection, right? And so the resurrection, whenever we say the word for, it's like, I have something for you. I have a, I have a gift for you. And everyone, Jesus on your shirt here, whoops, got that. Uh, Jesus, just see if you're working. Jesus, I've been wanting to do that for 20 years. <laughs> Focus, people. How can they do that? <laughs> So what Jesus modeled for us, what Jesus modeled for us uh, in the Gospels is not just the idea that everyone is, uh, is, is invited into the story of the resurrection, but he, he went to people that nobody else was going to at the time. So not many people at the time were empowering women that have had significant sin and sexual immorality, and he met and empowered women. Jesus crossed the dividing line when people were being uh, incredibly racist towards certain groups, whether it be in Samaria or somewhere else. Jesus went across and was the first one to reach out. When people were screaming and running away from the lepers or from people who were ceremonial unclean, it was Jesus who went to them and touched them. So when we say Easter's for everyone, the resurrection is a gift and Jesus has modeled this idea that everyone's welcome to the party. Amen? So, Kirk, would you, would you pray for uh, sure. that this sermon? What we're hoping for tonight is that if you're not a follower of Jesus or haven't dedicated your life to Jesus or not been baptized, I'm just going to say it straight out. My hope and our hope is everybody sitting in this room, no matter what your age is, that this is a day you would say, I'm going to follow Jesus or I'm going to recommit to Jesus. 100%. Even if you didn't want to come, but you got dragged here, I get it. I understand that totally. Or you're just showing up because it's kind of the thing to do, and then you're going to go have a nice dinner or something. Totally cool. I'm just glad you're here. But I think your heart might be transformed. Would you pray? Lord, we thank you because of your resurrection. You have made life in you accessible to everyone. And we embrace your life, Lord. And we embrace the power of the resurrected life. Yeah. And Lord, we embrace the hope that we have now of eternity with you. And so Lord, fill us and speak yeah. to us today with your spirit yeah. so that our lives would continue to be transformed day by day. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you, bro. Love it, buddy. All right. Give him a hand again. So, so growing up in northern Minnesota, uh, my parents gave me a great foundation of faith in the Lutheran church, and we went to church kind of every week, and then later in life, I went completely off the rails. I don't know, anybody else completely off the rails? And then came back to this incredible love of Jesus, and Easter is my favorite. So I'm going to ask for your grace. I probably will get a little bit excited. I'll probably talk a little fast. I'll walk over here to talk to you guys, and then I'll come over here, and I'll talk to you guys. Because the, no, the, the, see, the message we have is so good and life-changing. And let me say that the one word you could put all of this into is this one word right here. Love. You see, God's loved you and me so much that he sent his only son to live, to teach, to die on the cross, to break the division between God and humanity. He then was buried, and on the third day, he himself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, rose from the dead. And then people wrote about it, and then people were eyewitnesses. See, this is love. And if you ever thought God was like this grumpy grandpa or looking to see what you do wrong or full of wrath or punishing you because you've done something, you need to know that that's a lie. It is not in the Bible. You see, it is mercy that brought Jesus to the cross. It was him and his love for you. And you've heard the cliche. If you were the only one on the planet, 
Jesus would have done it. So you just need to know from the get-go, you are so loved. Isn't that good news? Now, before I teach the specific story of the resurrection, I want to let you know that there's actually a really big problem. (laughs) There's actually a problem that we're kind of experiencing here in the Western world about the um, lack of information, you might say, about the true and beautiful God. Uh, In fact, let me show you a stat. I think there's a stat, 67%. Do you know what that is? That is not the amount of games the Broncos will win this year. Pretty much guaranteed. I, but might be higher, might be lower. 67% in a recent survey from a Barna group said uh, that was the number of people in the United States that believed Easter was a religious holiday. Okay? Now you're like, oh yeah, that seems about right. But get this. Then they asked the question, do you think Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus? Look at this number. Okay, right there. Right there. I heard it. (gasps) 42% of the United States feels that Easter means or is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So some of you might be thinking, what? We need to get out there, whatever. Well, it gives us, it's a problem, but it's actually a beautiful problem. Because it shows us the opportunity that we have for people to hear about the true story of a resurrection, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. But it's fascinating. I was uh, with a friend named Troy. Um, A lot of you guys know Troy. Uh, He's a doctor in town. And we were at a local establishment having a craft beverage. And we were talking about friends. And we were talking about, you know, family. And then I just asked him this. I said, hey, Troy, what does the resurrection mean to you? And his answer was awesome. He had some words, but basically what he said is, it's everything. So what's the resurrection to you? If you look at this little kind of line, it's everything to me because of life in him. Or, you know what, guys? 60, I don't know the math. Is it, what's the math? What's 42% minus 100? Thank you. 58% would come close to saying it's nothing. And so everybody in this room right now, when I ask you the question, how significant is the resurrection of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago to you personally? And I I mean it. See, at this church, we don't mess around. We're gut honest. We're transparent and vulnerable. And so I've had times in my life where I just felt it was slipping. I, I didn't even realize it. I've had times in my life where it comes back up here. And I want you to think, where are you right now? And be honest, after a crazy COVID and all of this year, would you put yourself, it's everything to me. Or, you know what, I'm feeling not much. Or maybe I'm right in the middle. So for a lot of people, the idea of the resurrection isn't that significant in their life in the United States. And sometimes even in the church. And I want to give you an illustration of what has happened. Let me show you. The, so three years ago was a sale of the most expensive piece of art in the history of the world. $450 million it was sold for. Now, interestingly, it was a painting of Jesus. Interestingly. Here's the picture. Now, I don't like showing it in a way because this looks nothing like Jesus, probably. But this was painted in 1500 by a guy named Leonardo da Vinci. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah, Da Vinci, he only had like less than 20 paintings. And so he put this together, and this is called Salvatore Mundi. That's in Latin, and it means the savior of the world. Now this guy, this was lost. It's, it's kind of like he's holding the earth and savior of the world kind of thing. He wouldn't, Jesus wouldn't have looked like this. The, the Renaissance painters would oftentimes paint kind of what they look like into the painting or their model. So uh, uh, disregard kind of the look. But the illustration is this, you guys. This got lost, right? And then it was found. But when it was found, it looked closer to this. And when they found it, they thought it was a fake. Because 
over the top of the original, and this, it was even worse than this. This is kind of mid-restoration. There was all sorts of painting. The color, the color of his clothes was actually red. The orb thing was different. And so what happened is you had this beautiful, beautiful thing, incredible, original, awesome thing. And then over the top of it, over 500 years, well, somebody else painted on top of it. Oops. Yeah, right? And then someone painted on top of that. And then a couple hundred years went by, and they took some of it off. Well, you know what? Da Vinci didn't get it really quite right, so I'm going to go ahead and alter it. <laughs> right? And so layer after layer after layer of not the original and fake art. It dropped the price to just before it got restored, it was like 100 bucks because someone thought it was a fake. It took two years to slowly take off all of the stuff that was added to it. Then they found, oh my gosh, it's a Da Vinci. It's incredible. And so what has happened in our Christian faith? What has happened in my heart over the years when I went off the rails? And I bet what's happened to you is there's this beautiful story of Jesus, this beautiful Jesus. And what has happened is because of trauma, because of pain or suffering or maybe I'm going to get in trouble, maybe, I hope not, political views or your philosophies that you just start piling things up that is not what the Bible actually says, and it's not what Jesus says. So then you get this Christianity that is anemic, and what Jesus does is he comes back, and what we're trying to do at Canyon View is say, let's get back to the vibrancy of Jesus, period. And everything in the Bible, we look through the Jesus lens, and we go like, wow, it's gorgeous. I believe some of you tonight have had this stuff that has kind of covered up, and you are waiting to come alive again to Jesus. You see people who love Jesus, and you're like, I don't feel that way. I don't have that passion. Well, it's really close. It's really close. So now let me tell you the main part of the story what we came here today, right? The resurrection is so fascinating. You guys want to hear the story of Jesus' resurrection? Yes. Okay. So it actually starts, I, I like the part on Saturday. On Saturday, there's this shady meeting, this meeting that's behind the scenes that nobody wants to talk about, but Matthew wrote it down. Thank you, Matthew. And it was a meeting between the high priests, uh, between uh, the Pharisees, and um, Pilate, all right? These are, the, these are the groups that put Jesus to death. And they were meeting, and here's what it says in Matthew. Let's go to the first verse. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they gathered before Pilate, and they're like, okay, we, they shouldn't even be meeting. The chief priests and the Pharisees at this time should have been something, doing something else because of the festival going on. Let's see what happens. And said, sir... We remember how that imposter, a.k.a. Jesus, said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. So these shady characters at the time knew Jesus said himself, I'm going to rise from the dead. And so what they thought is, therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead. So they're like, how do we stop it? Like, let's keep going. And then they said, the last fraud will be worse than the first. The last fraud, they're saying, like, there's going to be a fraud that Jesus is rise, rises from the dead? Like, like before? Oh, are you talking about the fraud when 5,000 people saw it? bread and fish miraculously, that fraud? Are you talking about the fraud when in front of everybody Jesus held, healed a leper? Like that fraud? Are you talking about the fraud where Jesus goes to the, the Samaritan woman and said, I am, I am the water that brings life. And she ran and told her whole town that Jesus prophetically told everything that was going on in her life. That fraud? You can't have frauds when you have Tons and tons and tons of eyewitnesses. So these guys are, I'm going to stop right there. Pilate said to them, you have guards of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. Interesting, he gave them permission. So now it's a Roman situation. So they went to the tomb, secured it by sealing the stone and setting a guard. What that means is they put a Roman symbol on the, uh, on the stone. And if you break a seal on the Roman stone, many of you know this? 
uh, it means that they can kill you. So if you go up there to tamper with a stone and the guards see you doing that, jah, 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 stab you, right? So here's what they're thinking. Here's what the Romans and the Pharisees and the chief priests are thinking, guys. Ain't nobody getting in this tomb. Ain't nobody getting out of this tomb. We are stopping this right now. But then, give me a, come on, let's just pretend we're down in the south. Give me a, but then. There it is. But then it was early in the morning and Mary Magdalene and another Mary, who wasn't the Mary of Jesus, but it was the Mary who was the mom of other two disciples. They get up when it's still dark and they're going to go to the tomb. Now, what are they thinking? How are they going to race and how are they going to move the tombstone? They're not going to be able to move it and they know it. Is there something that they know? Is there something unconscious that says, I think something magical might happen? I don't know. Let's see what the Bible says. So I'm going to read you the story of the resurrection. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary. I feel bad for that Mary. <laughs> it's like some, someone says, this is Corey. And, oh, that's the other Corey. So they went to the tomb, right? We know this. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. I love this picture. This is a miracle. And he's just like sits on the stone like, what's up? I just did this. And so his appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. I'm going to stop right there. Back up the truck. Boom. So at Canyon View, if you don't attend here and you don't have a home church, I want to invite you into the journey of getting to know Jesus. And next week, you're going to start with the Jesus that might shock you. And you might even find at times there are things we do that might surprise you, like what I'm going to do right now. Do you know that in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then in John, the accounts of the morning of the resurrection are different? In some, there's one. In some, there's two. In some, they're, they're not the same account. And so people use that to say, this Bible probably isn't legit because it contradicts itself. Well, here's what you need to know. Everything in the Bible is aligned to one thing. And when you do a study on this, psychologists, forensic scientists, and others... What they see is if you have eyewitnesses on one account and they're all the exact same story, the police or whoever would say, we have corroboration going on. They have aligned their stories. And so what actually makes eyewitnesses more authentic is when, when they see certain events happen that are a little bit of a different angle, and then they put together what are the chunks. So in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and, and then also John, we have all of the same chunks. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. He was buried in a tomb financed by a guy named no Joe and Nick, Joseph and Nicodemus. On the third day, he rose again. He was sighted. Does that make sense? He was seen by many, many people. And he, he for 40 days before he ascended to heaven. And so it actually affirms the good news. These are the kind of things we're not at all afraid to talk about because our faith journey is to the gut level real. That we can deconstruct it if you need to, but you're actually doing what happened to that painting. We're restoring the beauty of the truth. Let's keep going. The next verse. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. They, they probably fainted or something, right? But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. For he has risen. He, just as he said. And then the angel's like, you don't believe me? Come on. Let me show you where he was. And see the place where he lay. Then go quickly, they said, to tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. So read this with me. One, two, three. He has risen from the dead. Oh, man. And boom. Yeah, right there. Explanation. Uh, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you. And so this is very exciting. So what's really cool is what happens next, because it's not even the best part yet. And so, 
they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. Fear and great joy. Now this sometimes can be the Christian experience. This duality of the kingdom has come and the kingdom is yet to come. And so we actually can have great sorrow and great, great joy. We can actually have depression, for those of you in this room who are struggling with anxiety or depression, and you can have the joy of Christ. See, having depression or anxiety or some sort of mental challenge doesn't say that you're not a good Christian. It's a real issue, and Jesus is really there to walk with you in it and in time to heal you. This duality of life, pain, and healing, it's the real deal. But you see, there will be a day when the kingdom comes in fullness, and there'll be no more pain and no more suffering. Can I get an amen? amen. Back to this great story. And be- now, this is the moment I love. This is my favorite part, you guys. If any kids in here, this is my favorite part. So Mary's, the Mary's and the other Mary are running. <laughs> they're going back, and they're like, full of fear and joy. So show your neighbor what fear and joy looks like on your face. Go. (laughs) John, that was awesome. It's like, (laughs) and so they're running that way. And then behold, Jesus himself gets in the way of them going and running away and says, greetings. Like you want to, greetings, earthlings? No, this, uh, this greetings is, um, in this particular language, you're going to love this. The New Testament is mostly in Greek, of course, but then they translate it back to a type of language, Jesus. And it would have been something like, hello. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Almost like, ta-da. It was this, the idea is it's this joyous excitement that not only is he back, but he was so excited to see Mary and Mary. I'm alive. (laughs) Sometimes we think of Jesus Jesus as like, well, he must be just be going, oh. And, you know, you see him and he's like Swedish looking and stuff. (laughs) That's not Jesus. Jesus was fully God and fully human. So charismatic, so likable. That fisherman, rough and tough fisherman, would have just dropped their nets and said, I'll follow that guy. It's Jesus. Greetings, and he came up, and they took a hold of him and his feet, and they bowed, and they grabbed his feet, and they worshiped him. Oh, it's so good. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to... Uh, to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is good news. I think the word in here that's good is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Church, new friends that Julie and I are meeting, we've been in town for 14 months. You don't have to be afraid. For Christ has come alive. And for those that repent and believe, you will have life. Now, again, I told you we're going to be honest with you. For those that don't know Jesus yet, or you have not repented and said, I choose to follow him. I realize he went to the cross. I would have a little fear. I, I, would, I would be a little afraid. I'm just going to be honest. The fear of God, more than just the respect and awe of God, but this kind of idea of what will happen to me when I'm gone? What will happen when Jesus comes back? You see, just having that question in your mind, it's not a good way to live. For he came to set you free from that question so that you could live without fear. Isn't that good news? I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So, worship team, come on up. Let's go back to the graph or the line. Here's my hope. I hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, because I'm not that great of a communicator, do my best, but I know I miss it sometimes. But my hope was, in just that 15 minutes, wherever you were on this line, 
there's something happening in your heart where you're moving up a little bit. Where you're just kind of like, you know what? I can tell you 100% of this room has heard the story and knows that Jesus' resurrection is what Easter's about. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to worship God together as a family. And you're going to see some pretty cool stories in our worship right now and some video work. And then I'm going to come up here. And before we go, I'm going to ask everybody in this room to surrender to Jesus. And if you aren't ready for that, Canyon View is a safe place. You don't have to believe in order to belong, to be part of the journey of who Jesus is. But I just wonder, I just wonder if today's the day for many of us. So this worship song is about a grave turning into a garden or a life. Church, would you stand with me and let's worship God.
new, you know, I'm so excited. For those of you who don't know Judy, for her story, someday you're going to get to know her and what she's been through and some pain and brokenness. And for her to come up in front of four or 500 people and hold a sign that says, now I'm free, is a spiritual miracle. And so, thank you. So just hang with me for a second. Give this holy moment two minutes. What did the apostle Paul think of the resurrection? Well, he said in Rome or 1 Corinthians, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all a people most to be pitied. The Apostle Paul says, like if it's just about this life, and if he didn't raise from the dead, what are we doing? But it says, for as in Adam all die, referring to original sin, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. You see, my dad, he's 86. His, his name is Roger. Such a good dad. I don't know how much time he has left, but here's what I know. Not by anything I've done or he's done. I get to hang out with my dad for eternity. Eternity. Because he loves Jesus. And I love Jesus. And I didn't earn it. I was a complete moron into stuff a man shouldn't be doing. Chasing things I shouldn't chase. <laughs> My wife would be like, amen, preach it. <laughs> it's just crazy when we surrendered our life to Jesus. Julie and I were 28 and we got baptized. Even we were baptized as babies. It was a wonderful tradition in the Lutheran faith. I'm very thankful for that moment. But as adults, we got baptized. And it just started to change things in our life. If you've not been baptized this Wednesday, be here at 6. It's a good night to get dunked. Yeah. Now, now, I'm really serious. If you as an adult have never been baptized, and you call yourself a Christian, which you are, because baptism doesn't save you. It just is a reflection of your life in Christ. I just want to invite you. I mean, really invite you. Why not? What are you waiting for? And so in a moment, you're going to actually see a number on the screen and you can hang out here. It'll stay up there where you can text the Jesus to that number and that connects with us and then we can get you the information to sign up for baptism. Technology! <laughs> but more importantly, you and I have been separated from this amazing Jesus by sin. And every one of us has missed the mark. And so what he did is he went to the cross. And on the cross is where even he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Just, just Jesus is this full on love. And even in that moment, this veil ripped in a temple between where that protected people from God. So a clear illustration that there's no more, no more barriers to God between humanity. But that's actually not true. There's one barrier. It's a stubborn, rebellious, prideful heart. You guys, you just need to know how much this moment is so important. And I know I'm dragging it out. For those who know Jesus, it means everything. What I'm asking you to do is just take a moment. Holy Spirit, come. And I want to invite you to repent. That means just to not only say, God, I realize I have made bad choices, but that we have a new worldview now, that Jesus is everything. And just think, the question for you is, would you like either for the first time to surrender your life to Jesus? Or are you at a point where you've had a crazy last couple years? you know it's time to dedicate 
your life to this loving Jesus. And you know, Billy Graham did it certain ways and teachers do it all sorts of ways when we ask people to respond. And we do that because it's a bodily movement. It's a symbol. It's also showing God I am making a choice and I'm not ashamed. And so... We'll do it one way. There's lots of ways to do this. But I just want to make it clear that you know that you know that you know that you have life for eternity because of Jesus by saying yes to him. And so I'm just going to do this kind of one way. I'm going to say one, two, three in a moment. Count to three. And when I get to three, if this is an important night for you to recommit or for the first time to say yes, all I'm asking you to do is put your hand up like you're reaching up to God and proud and confident no shame so think about it maybe you've been a Christian for 20 years but you're hearing the Holy Spirit say come back to me I love you one two three Now, wherever your hand is, put it up higher. And everybody else, just keep it up for a little bit. Look around the room. These are people who are authentically in their heart wanting more of Jesus, whether first time or the 30th. And so Holy Spirit, come. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. And I realize for many of you, you've been saved a long time, but this is a moment where you're saying, yes, again. So Holy Spirit, come. God, would you overwhelm these folks who are brave, just even to put their hand up in public and say yes to you, Jesus. Would you overwhelm them with even discipleship opportunities coming up? Put in their heart if they should join us on Wednesday to worship and get, and get baptized. And Lord, that they would be in a place where they could grow and have intimacy with you, Jesus. And we bless whatever's happening in each person's heart tonight. We just bless it. We bless it. And we say yes. What an honor to be here in this room. Say yes. And all God's people said enthusiastically. Yeah. Amen. So I know this sounds I know this sounds a little funky, but before you go, put the put the number on the screen if you have it and you text Jesus. There it is. Text Jesus to that number. If you put your hand up and you want to get baptized, you want to connect, you want to get into some discipleship, please text it and we'll reach back out to you. Just text it before you go. All right. Hey, guys. He is risen. Yeah. All right. Here's what you need to do. You need to tell your neighbor. You need to call people on the phone. You need to text them. And you need to tell them, come to church tomorrow morning. All right. All right. Let's continue to worship, fellowship, party in the lobby, party outside. God bless you. Can you play a little worship?